Now that I've identified some of the practices I use when preparing unfolds, we'll actually run through um, and perform a new unfold for that same Halo 4 Warmaster helmet. So I've booted up Pepicore Designer 3, this time with an OBJ file that, that has been exported from the Blender uh, 3D modeling software. And we'll, we'll get something like this. Um, I create, when I create the models, I put some color to it. Um, typically, um, models won't have color when they're for Pepicura, so it'll look something more along these lines, but I'll leave the color in just to, to better describe what I'm doing. Uh, so our first objective will be to specify open edges, um, and we'll do this pretty much solely in the 3D model view of Pepicora Designer. Uh, in order to specify the open edges, we'll use the knife tool, which can be found in the, uh, the tray at the top of the program. And here, if we <clears throat> run our mouse along the edges of the model, uh, it creates a green highlight to show where we are, and if we left-click it, it'll turn orange to indicate that that edge has been specified as an open edge. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is run through and, to the best of our ability, uh, it takes some, some educated guesswork on where we want to create our open edges to create our long strips of paper. Uh, to help with that, we'll go to Settings, Other Settings, and we've got this function down here to hide almost flat folding lines. We're going to decrease this to between 160 and 165 degrees. What will happen when we decrease this is these edges uh, that, that go perpendicular to our strip will disappear because they're greater than um, the angle between this face and this face is greater than the angle that we're specifying um, to a hide. So we'll click OK and when we do that we see that a lot of these lines following the curve have been hidden but we still see the black lines that are what are <clears throat> that are what we're going to make our open edges. So in this way, we can see how we want to set up our strips. Now, to help with uh, speeding this along in the unfold process, is is if we go to 3D menu mirror point. If we have a model that is symmetrical down the uh, Y Z plane we can use this tool to specify open edges on one side of the YZ plane and it will follow through and do the same thing on the other side. So this kind of the ability to use this depends on how the uh, the modeler has set up the model but it's an effective tool to speed things along. So as I said all we're going to do to first specify our open edges is follow the contour lines of the model. Now we notice although these lines are although these edges are hidden, they're still there, so we want to make sure we've got them clicked. Now when I have this long strip, it terminates into a strip that goes the other direction. So we want to utilize those black lines to follow the natural curve of the model. In this way, again, we're making our long stripped pieces. Now in some cases, we want to leave those black lines alone so that our long strips are bending around, bending around <clears throat> into other strips. <clears throat> So there's no real right or wrong way to do this, but there's some educated guesswork. And the more you <clears throat> the more you play with these models, 
um, in performing these unfolds, the more intuitive you'll find it is to, uh, to specify these open edges. So we're going to follow the opening of the, the next seal all the way around. So we've created a pretty long strip here in this gray strip. We'll do the same thing. Coming around on the, the bottom, we'll make this brown strip all the way from front to back. Moving up, we'll essentially be doing the same thing. Every once in a while you get a stray line. You can just left click it again to turn it off. So here we have to make a choice. What I'm going to do is we have this strip following around back here. I'm going to allow this to turn around and follow right on back up to the front. We'll see how that winds up being when we perform our unfold and start looking at the 2D view. You want to make sure these thinner strips are long so that they're all one part. So, <clears throat> so we've got the opening here for the visor and what we're going to do is follow that whole thing around from bottom to top. And then we're going to allow that to terminate and start bleeding into this brim in brown here. And that brim is going to follow along back around here and then here again we're going to let that bleed into this strip that we're defining that follows this curved surface Here we're coming up around, around this way, and then that part's going to, again, follow this curved ear cup kind of thing. Uh, we will let's see what that does to us. So now we're we'll make that cut there. So we've got a piece that's kind of going all over the place. But that's okay. We will, uh, when we do our 2D parts layout, we'll look at what we've got to work with. Here again on this nose recess, We've got this thinly stripped part that we want to make sure is all one long strip. Now we'll have to have a control uh, opening to define the uh, end of our strip. So we can either do this now or we can do it later when we're considering our 2D uh, portion. So again, I'm, I'm noticing that there's strips that uh, surround the perimeter of these eye recess, recesses. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow those along. And I'm going to follow this up into this little recess at the forehead of the visor. And then I'll just 
put these across here like so finish following the recess for the eyes then I'll just uh, create some strips here and we got this little black brim piece that I think I'll follow along like so and let's see we'll finish these little recesses near the cheeks again we're following this thin strip around and back into the recess we'll, uh, we'll finish it like that and see what we have in the 2D view we got these recesses here which we'll cut like that and finishing up our forehead follow the perimeter of the recess create some control lines and we'll see what that looks like in the 2D view when we go to unfold finish up those lines although the black line disappeared here we can still see that that's going to be a not flat surface so we're going to run through and define this open edge in the center of the model we'll follow along on this raised surface to create the strip so here we see this long strip following around this raised surface here and turning back and going back on the symmetrical side and we'll run through the dial at the back of the helmet this will be a slightly trickier, trickier piece on our parts layout because it's somewhat more defined or defined with greater detail than some of the rest of the helmet <clears throat> so there we have our 3d um, model with edges specified what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and save this guy we'll just put today's date on it now we'll move to unfold uh, the model onto the 2d view before I do that, I'll go to File, Print and Paper Settings, set my paper size to letter in 8.5 by 11 inches. I'll decrease my margins on the sides and tops and bottoms to 5 millimeters. Uh, I've got uh, print lines clearly checked, um, print page number and whatever else. I'll click OK. And now we move to click the unfold button. I want to make sure my auto is unchecked so that when I click the unfold button, my parts layout prompt comes up and I can specify my part size. Uh, I'll make this helmet uh, height of 340 millimeters. It automatically adjusts the width and depth proportionally. And all I'll do is click OK. It'll run through and perform the unfold. And so here we see uh, a rough layout of our parts, and we see all those strips that we've uh, created over here in the 3D uh, view.